Hi, this is Keith Bradbury from Mojo Mouthpiece Work. I'd like to show you today the work surface I use for uh, refacing and uh, hand finishing mouthpieces. What I have here is a piece of plate glass that I've purchased locally at a, a glass uh, a store. It is three eighths of an inch thick. It is 9 inches wide and 11 inches long. Uh, I originally got that so that it would uh, a full sheet of sandpaper, uh, which is 8.5 by 11 or so, would fit on there. Um, you should buy this with all the edges uh, sanded or uh, and rounded and beveled so you don't cut yourself on the corners. Um, I had access to a, uh, a uh, belt sander designed for glass uh, where I used to work my day job when I bought this so I, I sanded all these myself but I wouldn't recommend you do that unless you have the proper equipment. Um, I started out using this with loose sheets of paper but I since moved on to, to a mylar backed uh, sandpaper that I'm think is uh, the best that you can do for this uh, application. Uh, the problem with loose sheets or little pieces or full sheets is they tend to curl and when you're trying to work on mouthpieces um, I found out when going for the finest of adjustments uh, they might curl up and, and it fought me a little bit. They would take off material where I didn't want it um, and they didn't lay perfectly flat. So, um, uh, I like this surface better than a granite surface. Um, it's portable. You know, you can throw this in a briefcase or a suitcase and take it someplace with you. Um, the Mylar back uh, sandpaper uh, is made by 3M. Um, I, uh, they call it a micro finishing film. I buy this from a woodworking supply place uh, in Brooklyn, New York called... Um, toolsforwoodworking.com the two grits that I like to use is a 40 micron grit and a 30 micron grit. Um, um, the 40 micron grit is a 40 micron grit which is equal to about 320 grit sandpaper and a 15 micron grit which is finer more like a 600 using the scale used in America uh, if you're using the European scale, the P scale, be closer to like a 1200 on that. Um, the way I prepare my surface, I used to use uh, the peel, peel off the adhesive and just put it on here, but I found out the glue is um, very strong. And when I peeled it off, I had to go through a cleaning process. And the way I combat that is I use some leftover baby powder. You can use a talc uh, powder. You don't really need the perfumes, but that's what I had for free here, so I'm using that up. And then I use, oh, uh, this is just a uh, washcloth that I uh, folded up and put a rubber band around. And what this does is it leaves a film of pow powder on here so that the adhesive uh, will not stick too uh, too well. I mean, well enough to hold them piece, but not so tight that I can't peel it off later. Now, so you peel back the backing, and you line it up where you want to put it. I like to use a half sheet that I've cut. You get it started. I used to try to do this by hand. But I found out, you know, I have a laminate roller from when I worked on a kitchen countertop, and this is a great tool. So you get it started, and then you reach underneath and pull it off, and roll that out. Don't worry if you get some powder on there. Do that again to the next sheet. Well, I pulled that one all the way off. <laughs> All right, that's a little more difficult. I recommend you just start it like I did the first one. What you want to make sure is you don't get any bubbles underneath this. 
so you need some kind of roller. I was using a wood roller, like a dowel, uh, one inch dowel, but uh, this works a lot better. You like said I didn't run out and buy this. I happen to have it already around, but I, it works so well. You might consider getting one. They're not that expensive. So there you have it. I've got my two surfaces there, uh, a coarser one, uh, and then a finer one for uh, mouthpiece work. Uh, you know, I hold the mouthpiece like so and flatten the table and, and work on the, uh, the leg. Now, uh, I would save these sheets. These come in handy. I cut them in half and I mix epoxy on them. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, they're just, there's a lot of things you can use them for. So don't throw them away. Um, when your surface gets worn, uh, this is how you peel it off get it started. You might have to stand up to get a little leverage. Now you can see the glue, how sticky you know, it wants to be, like chewing gum. If I didn't put the powder on this beforehand, it would have stuck much worse. You see there's a couple pieces of residue on here. It comes off with lacquer thinner, so I used to do that. I used to put lots of solvents on there, but if you have only a little bit like that, you can usually just scrape it off with a Oops, should have cleaned that off. Scrape it off with a razor blade to get back to a uh, flat surface. Just make sure you don't have any on there because uh, getting a little bit of that underneath the sheet of, of paper will uh, mess you up. So that's it, and uh, that's a tip from Mojo.